Honorable members of the retreat, it is now clear that corruption is a big problem in Uganda. The IGG estimates that the country loses Uganda shillings 9.7 trillion per year on account of corruption. This is not acceptable. Therefore, corruption should be crushed and will be crushed. Before the advent of the NLM leadership, corruption was endemic in Uganda, both during the time of the British and afterwards. I've told you before that my father, who was a traditional cattle keeper with no school education, was always in possession of an injection ceiling, a bomber, and all the anti Rajpumpuru, Rajpumpuru is what the Banyankuru called triposonomiasis, all the anti Rajpumpuru government controlled drugs in, you, in use at that time in both Uganda and Rwanda. So I am a very qualified whistleblower because I was there watching all this. Out of the Uganda government veterinary stores, Mr. Ikaguta and all his colleagues would buy illegally a drug called antricide, antricide, and another one called prosolt, known in Rinyankore as Kachungwa and Machunda. They would give them their own names, the Banyankore names. From Rwanda, they would buy Katuku, Berenel, I think they called it. Mr. Kaguta would store both syringe and drugs in our traditional huts, a fuha, where there was indoor cooking and housewarming from the Amahega, the fireplace. I do not know what effect the, the, the fire indoor warming would have on the drugs. On the human drugs side, there was a thriving illegal business of abebunzi. They were called abebunzi, meaning illegal, untrained medical operators using penicillin and other human drugs, bought from the government health centers and the syringes to inject them into human beings. The colonial. African policemen behind the back of their white supervisors would take bribes from the Wakadara. Wakadara is what they were calling the African taxi, taxi drivers of that time. Wakadara operators to ignore the, the mechanical defects of the vehicle. If a vehicle was defective, ah, the Wakadara man would give a bribe to the policeman and the policeman would ignore the, the defect. Or overloading, having more people in the vehicle than it was allowed to, to carry. The chiefs were taking bribes from the Wanainchi for some service provision, e.g. issuing cattle movement permits or full rente. If you wanted to move your cattle, you needed a permit, you, you bribe the chief. The teachers in the, in the schools, main crimes were sexually preying on the school girls, beating learners, etc. With independence, a new problem came on the scene. The brutality 
impunity and extortionate conduct of the small neo-colonial armies. They could kill, they could rape women, and they could loot one inch's property with impunity. When the NRA came on the scene, all this misconduct stopped. In the Royal Triangle, the area the NRA controlled between 1981 and 1986, any extrajudicial killings were punished, starting with the public execution of Zabroni and, and his colleague, who had killed Sri Wadainchi under the influence of alcohol in Murure village near Semuto. A boy called Rubare and his group killed some North Korean military experts on Wool Road, initially presenting themselves as war heroes who had co killed Koreans in an ambush. Later on, it was discovered that the Koreans had surrendered peacefully and the Rubare group had killed them in order to keep the loot they had taken from their car without surrendering it to the NRA, to the army, as was, as was mandated by the Code of Conduct. We were so strict that if we got fight, everything you capture, you hand over to the, to the army. You don't keep yourself. Now, in this case, th these boys uh, ambushed a vehicle where they were killed because these boys wanted to loot their, whatever property was in their car. But the other day I checked with the, I told Ms. General Jim Hoyes to check uh, what happened. Now apparently, yes, the Koreans had surrendered. These boys shot them, but they shot them because, according to what Jim found from the commanders who are still alive, they shot them because the poor Rubari, the boy, our soldier, shouted the order in Swahili, Mkono you. The Koreans could not understand the Swahili. So when they didn't put up their arms, that's how they shot them, they killed them. But also uh, kept the, the property. They, they took it and hid it, money, whatever was there. But eventually we arrested them. Uh, and that's why initially we thought they had killed them to keep the loot, but apparently they had killed them because of not communicating properly. They were promptly arrested, tried, and punished. Although I do, now here, when I was writing this speech, I, I said that I do not remember the punishment because we were entering the difficult time of the counteroffensive of Obote of 1982-83, and, and, and when we had to make a strategic withdrawal out of Upper Bremezi, Bremezi Upper Bremezi, the other area of Semuto, to Singo, here, here where you are, and Lower Bremezi, across the river. But now I have found that the, the, the trial found out that, yes, the, the Rwandans had looted the property and kept it, and they were punished for that. But for the killing, it was established that they, they killed the Koreans because of poor communication, not because they, they wanted to hide. So after I, I was informed that Rwanda was re, 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 rehabilitated and, and died in fighting. These tough measures created an army of a new type. That is why one of our mobilizers, Sumini, one of our mobilizers, one time crafted a verse in a song that said, in quotes, Aba Serikali, Aba Ringawa Bichira, soldiers who are like nuns. They are soldiers, but they behave, they behave politely, and, and well, as if they were nuns, the Catholic nuns. A large part of that heritage has been kept. There are many Obote roadblocks by the army 
where the one inch would be brutalized and robbed, disappeared forever. You, you, you can never see roadblocks of the army again. Have you seen them anywhere? Have you seen any roadblocks of the army? Uh -huh. However, some corruption by a few elements in charge of money, supplies, and deployment has manifested itself. However, the patriots in the UPDF are handling this. The bulk of the UP UPDF is not involved uh, and, and are in fact victims of these corrupt people. The recent attack on our FOB forward operational base in Somalia and the loss of, the, of soldiers there was partially due to this corruption of some UPDF officers. We were here the other time and I t told the, that, that, that retreat that that attack on our camp in Somalia where we lost uh, quite a number of soldiers, I think there were 50-something soldiers, was because of the corruption. Because Somalia had become like a business. You, you would get commanders, because they get a bit of money, of, of allowances from the, the, the international groups, they get money. I think each one gets more than $800 in addition to no, they get $800, but then the government takes a part and they, they, they get a half of that. They get like $400 on top of their salaries. So it had become a business for commanders to put their runners and bodyguards in the team to go to Somalia, and then they share the money with the commander. They thought it was a, a welfare exercise. They didn't, they didn't know that this was a war. You are not supposed to send bodyguards and people like that for that fighting. You should form formed units, units which are prepared for fighting, uh, organic, not just collected last minute. And, and that's how we lost uh, so, uh, those, those, those soldiers. It was therefore the NRA that showed that corruption in Uganda can be defeated. NRA proved that corruption can be defeated because we defeated it. You can hear that the five years we were in Luero, I can only remember two, two incidents. The one of Murule, of Zabroni, and, and the one, this one of the Koreans. Five years. And we had, at that time we had a force of 4,000 soldiers here among the population. But very few cases. You, you, can, you can name them. You, you can, that's why I'm remembering these two. The corruption we are facing now has got two dimensions. One dimension is the stealing of government money, taking bribes from the public for, to provide government services, misusing the procurement procedures to cheat the state, and corruptly handling personal issues, e.g. nepotism, and selling government jobs. Now, this selling of jobs is really becoming very serious in the local governments, maybe in other areas. The other day, I had a delegation from Bunyoro. There was three, three districts, Kagadi, Kakumiro and Chivari. One of the, sp of the speakers there said, you know, my children are educated, but they can't get jobs. And I don't have, he was speaking in Rinyoro, that to buy a job in the local government, you need 10 million shillings. I have reported this to the IGG, and the IGG will now follow up from the, that report which was in our, in, our, in our meeting. So you can see how the situation is uh, getting out of hand. The man was fundraising from me that I give him 10 million shillings.
so, so that you can go and, 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 and buy some job, at least one job for the children. Uh, now, I'm glad you are all here. Professionally, constitutionally, and logically, it is the following people that are in charge of government money, government procurement, and government personnel administration. Three people, uh, people are in charge of these three areas. Government money, procurement, and personnel. These are the permanent secretary in the ministry, a chief administrative officer in a district, a town clerk in a city or municipality, a Gombora chief in a sub-county, and the clerk of parliament in parliament. In the army, even in the army, you not see that the commander is the one in charge of money and so the commander. No. In the army, it is the chief of staff who is in charge of administration, money, all those things, the logistics, is the one who is responsible. Not the commander, not the army commander, not the division commander. Commander is to you command. Shambria up, attack here. That's your job. You plan for that. It is now the chief of staff and, and the other people they call staff officers. Staff officers means admi administrators of the army to do the, the, the these things, the money, the what, the procurement, the personnel. A sub county, a managing director in a parastate, in a parastate it is managing director, and the clerk of parliament. In the army, it is the chief of staff, the division administrative administration officer, etc., etc. It is initially not the work of the political leaders to fight corruption. That's what that's what I want the Ugandans to understand. Because really it's not the work of the political leaders to fight corruption. However, ultimately, they are responsible for defending the interests of the people. If the accounting officers do not do their work, they, they want to guard our man, government money, to guard, uh, to, to follow the proper procedures of, of buying, and selling the government, government things to handle personnel, promotion, what, recruitment, is the accounting officer. These accounting officers. Yeah. Even in the district, the, the district service committee, co 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 commission is answerable to the chief administrative officer. He's the one who can, who can say you are doing bad things we are doing the right things. But if they don't do their work, that's why now the political, because you are, you are elected by the people to stand for us, for the people. So if these professionals don't do their work, you must do your work. You must come in. The other dimension of corruption is employee disloyalty in a private company. Because also, don't just talk of corruption in the government. We must also address corruption in the private sector. So the other dimension of corruption is employee disloyalty in a private company. The employees who steal from their employers are also enemies of the country. If the employers blacklist Uganda as a country where employees steal money from their employers with impunity, Uganda's economy 
will get stunted. Therefore, it is the work of the police to ensure that those who steal from companies, private or government, are held fully accountable, including paying back the money they stole on top of prison sentences. So this is the corruption. To defend government money, government procedures, and personnel, make sure the personnel are handled professionally in the government agencies, but also for the, especially for the police, to assist the private companies to fight corruption in their units. When we had, we, we had repaired uh, Sheraton Hotel, 1987, we repaired it, it, had, it, had, it was called Apollo Hotel because Obote wanted to give it his name, Apollo. But we, 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 we changed it and called it Sheraton because Sheraton came to manage it. When the Sheraton people came, they instructed strict orders. Then our people, our, empl our Ugandan, but I was Zulu. But we sang against Soro. But was that? They were now trying to, to be nationalistic in theft. Tr 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 trying to say that the, the Europeans, because the Europeans have now introduced strict methods. We cite you when you are coming to work. We cite you when you are going. <laughs> now they have become nationalists. But we sang against Soro. But was a motor Yes, if you are a thief, what do they do? They thought I, 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 I would support them. I said, go to hell. You, you, you are used, you, you are used to stealing from government companies. These private people are strict. They should cite you because you are thieves. You, you, you don't control yourself. So I remember that incident very well. It was a big, a big issue. And they were complaining to me because they knew I'm a freedom fighter. I, I, I defend Af they, they thought I would also defend their theft. But to the to be Biafe, to be Biafe, that they are stealing their own things. But how will the company survive if you, you go on stealing? Going back to the government money, now that the accounting officers have let themselves down. Because the accounting officers, you have not let down anybody, you have let yourselves down. Because this is your, your mandate. We are coming in directly. This is my person who wrote in directly. We are coming in directly, not indirectly. My secretary, please correct that. We are coming in directly. Apart from the State House and Corruption Unit, I'm also setting up both a tax investigation unit and an accountancy and audit unit. This country of yours has got a lot of money. I'm now convinced that you have a lot of money. First of all, there is under collection of taxes. That group of, I hope you call it the, the, the tax fellow. Muslim, did he come? You should call him, let him come. Yeah. The, the, there's a lot of under correction. I'm, I'm now getting a lot of information. So there is under correction, but also there is massive stealing of what is, co what is collected. Now, you can imagine how much more we could do if we plug both. That's what the VP was saying. If we plug both the under collection and the stealing. Apart from the State House and Corruption Unit, the one of Burgadia is okay. I'm also setting up both a tax investigation unit and an accountancy and audit unit. They will be able to investigate all tax evasions, under declarations, money diverted by Parliament, 
and stolen ETC. Because this money diverted by Parliament from what I, I gathered when I moved in was apparently for two, two purposes. Some of the diversion was just selfishness. Divert the money to do a small road from nowhere to nowhere in my constituency so that they know that I'm working very hard. Oye, oye, M7, oye. Some people, that's what they wanted. But in so doing, you undermine, you, you, you fragment the money which could do a bigger job. Like for instance here, in this area, we need a road from Rue across on the other river. We need a road from uh, Tamak Road from Ruero to Butarangwa to Ngoma to our farm in Udiamishengi where we sometimes go for retreat, cross Kafu and go to Masin. That's the road that is needed in that area. So if you divert, if you divert money and the MP just does a road from here, three kilometers to deceive the local people that you are working. This is sabotage. Let the money be concentrated to do what is the core for, the, for that area. Uh, but, but, but that was one, this was selfishness in this plea. But there was, it seems, it seems there was also actual theft where the money is diverted and not, doesn't do anything, you know, doesn't even do the, those small jobs local, just pocketed. So we are following that one now. On account of my experience in the colonial and immediate post-colonial times, I insisted on organizing the, the people to, into, to empower them to defend their interests. Because of what I, I told you, what I was watch, seeing in the colonial time, when we had this chance to be, to be involved in leadership, that's why I insisted on the LCs, RCs, resistance councils. Why did we have to have uh, LC3? We, we already had a Gomborra chief. So if it was administration, we didn't need any other person. But my, my thinking was, if the, what I used to see, because, because what I used to see, those, those, those people stealing government money, mishandling affairs, that actually, that's how I started our resistance. In our, because I was always fighting with the, with the vets, with the chiefs, with the teachers in the 1960s. That's how we started our resistance against the, the local corruption. So therefore, I thought it was good to have the people elect their own leader who would stand and, and watch for, for the interests of the people. And they have done it. They have elected LOC1, LOC2, LOC3, LOC5, 4. At one time it was LOC4. It is LOC4 even now, the MP. The MP is LOC4. Yes. He's look, she, he or she is looking after a constituency. The, the, then LOC5, all these are elected by the people. I think the mistake we made, which, which maybe we should think of correcting, is to bring in this issue of education. Education, somebody must have finished A level. So, we in Changwans here, if we are looking for MP, there are, there are many local people who could be, represent us better. But we need to look for some, somebody born or married in Changwans area who has got A level and above. And that person may, be, may, may not be, know the area well or, or care about it. So I think there, there was a problem. 
in Tanzania, and, and we did that because of, of English, of because of communication, because we are trying to get people who can go to, to, to Parliament and speak English. But I, I think that may have interfered with the, the, rep the representation element of, of, of the people, to elect people who are, who are concerned about the, about the area. They tried to bring the educational qualification at the LC3. I, re I, I, I rejected it. I had a big fight with the Dan Sali, with those people in that parliament of 96. So up to LOC3, there are no educational barriers. So you wonder why all these people don't speak for their people. And yet they have the opportunity. Instead, they, 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 it seems they become recruited also. I don't know why. We need to study that. The, the SEC members can uh, comment on that. On account of my experience in the colonial and immediate post-colonial times, I insisted on organizing the people to empower them to defend their interests. That is why we set up the Resistance Council system, the RRC Resistance Councils. On account of our experiences with veterinary officers and the medical personnel selling veterinary and human drugs, Gombora chiefs taking bribes, policemen taking bribes, ETC, we decided to create our own parallel popular structure, the LOC1, LOC2, LOC3, LOC4, LOC5, chairpersons, in addition to the Muruka, to the Muruka Gombora, so the chiefs, and the DC. Our expectation was that these elected people would not fail to defend the interests of their people. What has happened? How does corruption take place when these Kalisorisos? Is it Kalisoriso in Uganda? You call it Kalisoriso. Is it correct? Uh -huh. Kalisoriso, the one who is, who is watching, of the people are there. This retreat should discuss that. In the meantime, I'm linking directly with the victims of the corruption of, 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 of the government people, and these are the, are the people, the Wanainchi. So I'm glad that Right Honorable Nabang has, has continued my journey, because me, I went up to the zone, up to Achori and, and West Nile and Masaka. And even at that remote level, I was able to discover a lot of corruption. And, and I think uh, Burgundy Soke moved in and arrested some. So if the right owner of Navanja has gone to the, to the, to the district uh, and she's continuing with those, uh, those barazas, that, that's very good. Because they, you are linking directly with the victims, the victims of the, of the corruption. The, the Wanaichi have all the information. But besides, you, the accounting officers, you have really let yourselves down. Besides, we have got the young people, the Kampara parents, and allied products. You have forgotten that. We have forgotten that uh, NLM has been here for a long time. And uh, you people, you had the, the opportunity, the permanent secretaries, uh, I remember Mugasa. Do you remember Mugasa? The one who was heading the service. She was the first one to head the service when she was 43 years old. Uh -huh. Even my daughter, Nechove, when I was attacking Kampara, apparently she was hiding somewhere in Nabingo. Now you, you hear the vice president, she was in P6. So you people, you, you are young, young youth when the NRM came, and you, ha you have this chance of leading all of you, the, the permanent secretaries. Uh, but then there's now another layer, the Kampara parents group. 
performance. So, if you don't perform, besides we have the young people, the Kampala parents, and allied products, who have a different attitude from the present accounting officers, some of whom are original villagers, with a careerist and mercenary mentality. The Kampala Parents Group are moved more by passion than remuneration. I, I, have, I have gone to one of the Kampala Parents, my, my new PPS, where is she? Come. She's somewhere. Stand there and they see you. <laughs> Remove your mask so they see you properly. Now, this, this you know, I, me, I'm always mobilizing. I'm, I'm always mobilizing. So, this young girl would come to my home with my daughters when they were in Kampala parents and Litna Kasero, those, those Kampala schools. They speak English different from me. Me, I'm speaking Chamate English. But, but, but for them, they speak in another way. You, you go and see it. So, they, they would come home when they were in the, in the primary school, they, they would come home. So now, when I, I, I got into problems with you people, the older, the older people, the older, you, you, you are all young people, you are our daughters and, and sons. But these younger ones than you, when I got into problems, I started to think about these ones. So when I wanted to appoint somebody to fight, to appoint the job I gave to Brigadier Isoki, I checked with my network, then I, I remembered her, then I looked for her at that time. Gloria, can you, can you come and help me with this job of fighting corruption? Then I told her what it was. Then she said, no, that's not my passion. So, so she bounced me. I, I was bounced. N n it's, but now later, after some, this was some years ago, like four years ago. So I had to now look for Brigadier, so, for my group, Brigadier. So now, when this issue of PPS came, I went back to her. You, you, you young girl, will you have a, a, a passion? For, for, for being a PPS. That's what I can think about. <laughs> so, my young people, please, don't let yourselves down. The excuse of low pay because there was this excuse, oh, we have paid the low salary and all that. The excuse of low pay should be rejected. The FRONASA, NRA, UPDF have, ever since 1971, worked for no pay or low pay. But we always excel. Uganda is not a fully monetized economy and society. Between 1979 and 1980, my family was staying at Kololo and we were getting a low pay. However, my sister-in-law, Chamnyuni, from Buweju, would always bring us a sano, millet flour, and we would have perfect meals. Uganda is not like Europe. 
government jobs are partial. You, you, you do you get some, whatever little you get from, but the, the, the economy is still there, F- free food in the village, your relatives can bring you food. And you survive until the government is able to pay you a better pay. But to say that you can't work for the country, you must steal, because you have a low pay is not, uh, we don't accept it, because for us, we are fools, we work for no pay. Or low pay. For the last 50 years, our generals, the ones who retired two years ago, had been working for all that time from 19, you can, like, like, uh, uh, the, like the Tumines from 1979. But they were getting two million shillings, one million shillings generals. And, uh, until recently, when we, had, we, we did some, some improvement. Everybody knows why the salaries were low, were low or there was even no pay. The only mistake was by elements in the parliament who distorted our historical movement by paying themselves high salaries. This distorted our strategy of voluntarism instead of, or instead of careerism and mercenarism. They have now realized their mistakes. However high you put the salary, it cannot run a constituency. Collective efforts are better. PDM, Mioga, free education in the government schools. I am paying for many children in the... Why do you have to pay for children in the constituency? Are you a donor or what? Work to put a policy for the government to pay for those children so that they don't become your, your problem. What, what, the, the policy is there. Why don't you help us to implement that policy? Instead of not imp- implementing what can serve everybody, free education for all, and instead you try yourself to, uh, I am pay- paying for many children in the constituents. How will you manage? I could have blocked the moves by the MPs to award themselves high salaries. I opposed, but it did not block, because it is not always correct to block everything you consider a mistake. It is better sometimes to oppose, but also allow people to learn from their mistakes, or for the issue at hand to be clearer. In 1982, around August, my idea to the High Command to effect a strategic withdrawal from Upper Bremenzi and encourage the civilian population to leave the war zone and report to Obote so that we did not have to pointlessly scatter our small army between fighting the government army and guarding the huge population was rejected. I brought a proposal to the High Command in 1982. So you, you people, we have got a big population here. Let's encourage them to go and report to Obote and say the, the, the guerrillas have invaded our area. We don't, want, we don't want to be associated with them. We have come to join you in Yamurunga, the, 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 the beautiful one. I brought the, the proposal in the high command. They rejected it. The majority of the high command members partly influenced by the need to remain near their girlfriends among the civilian population rather than strategic thinking, argued that offloading the civilian population and encouraging them to report to Obote would mean that we would appear defeated. So for them, hence, appearance was more important than reality. So I had now two choices. Either to split from the majority and cause an internal conflict, or go along with the course of action I knew to be a mistake until reality proved me right. That is exactly what happened in the war. Around July 1983, after the successful attack on Kiboga, 
in spite of the overall bad situation, I called another high command meeting at Nyambindo. Nyambindo is some miles from here, where we had this meeting. I will introduce the issue of sending away the civilian population so that we remain free to concentrate on fighting the government army. What was the reaction? The reaction was, Katembele we to say, so <laughs> now they have changed. Where the situation is now, we must encourage the civilian population to go away from the war zone. So the, in some situations, as leaders, if you tell people your opinion and they don't listen, if it is a, not a matter of life and death, you, you leave them. And uh, they, will, they will learn from their mistakes. Like in this case, I, told the, the, I used to tell the MPs, this money you are giving yourselves is a bad example. Because if all the others started money high, high pay, how will shall we money? It is a sabotage. You are setting a bad example. The fundraising, I, the Kazora group, Kazora, Kasuri Rumumba group, the, the other one, Dombo, the, 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 the YPA, fundraising, fundraising, what? Fundraising is very dangerous. You don't have the, it's not even fundraising. Because of fundraising in Tungambo, where Mzee Kabuta was drinking his local brew, with his friends in the 1950s, a pot of beer and sugar was at five shillings. So they would oxonda to contribute. Each one, one shilling, one shilling, five of them, they buy a pot of beer. That's ox that is contributing. But if one person is the one to buy for all of you, that's not, that's not oxonda. That is Okshengera, Yaba He has bought for you. So when you, you are the only person with some, some money in the constituency, you go there, the villagers come and watch. They don't have any money with them. Oh, I have contributed 10 million. Where are you getting it from? Then they clap. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I will. Oh. You, you go to the money lender now. What, what sort of fundraising is that? That's not fundraising, that is extortion. But this was a mistake we tried to, to point, to, to, we told our people they didn't listen. Now you see how much, I, I don't know how many casualties we have had because of that. Casualties, literally, even, even some of them have died because of the death, of the pressures. This is called the struggle between the two lines the correct revolutionary and objective line and the incorrect subjective reactionary line. Subjective is when what you think in your head, you think that is what is on the ground. We, we work with objectivity, not with subjectivity. There is time for everything, the Bible says. The mistakes by elements in the parliament could not have been solved correctly at that time. It was better that they learn from their own mistakes, preserve the unity of the movement, and give us time to improve the geostrategic situation of the region with Mobutu's Congo, Bashir Sudan, Mzeimoi in Kenya who would sometimes close our borders, as well as still having a young army that needed the metamorphosis. Besides, the MPs and like the other public servants, we are not very many in number. Their disruption was in the bad example and not so much in the magnitude of the money involved. They have now learned that mistake. That is why fundraising is now very unpopular among the MPs. We should easily defeat corruption. The only support we need now, but here I have now discovered 
that you, the permanent secretaries, you maybe we did not communicate with you also, because apparently these permanent secretaries have been getting pressure from the parliamentary committees. Uh -huh. The parliamentary committees would ring them, said, if you are cooperative, we, we shall share with you. Uh -huh. If you are cooperative, we shall share with you. Uh -huh. But you should have reported this. I would have arrested them long ago. So I may have to arrest some of you for failing to report a crime. Whom should I start with among the PSCs? Because when, when you see a crime and you don't report it, the lawyers, Musa what, Chog, what, what Musa is that? Attorney General, when you hear a crime and you don't report it, Yes. Thank you, Excellency. Your Excellency, there could be several offenses. There could be conspiracy to commit an offense, aiding and abetting the commission of an offense. A but, but, but some of them, some of them would initially not not initiate, but they would be, be like in, in, in intimidated and they don't report, how do you call that? That would be, uh, if they don't report, that would be abuse of office. They don't report it? Yes. Yes. If you have an office and you're required to do something which you do not do and causes government a loss, that is abuse of that office. Uh, no, 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 no. What I'm saying, the MPs ring them, that you, you person, for instance, the, the money from energy, from energy, the money which was cut, Apparently, I'm told it was cut because they didn't cooperate. And they cut money from transmission line, from what, from what? So yeah. what's that? But yeah. Now, the, 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 these people were aware they didn't report it. They say so and so wanted to make me steal. Yes, you excellence, because if they know the offense, and they let the offense be committed. What is the offense? What is the, what is the, his, his, his aiding his, and abetting the commission of an offense. Uh, Mood the banana. By keeping quiet, you are aiding and abetting. Why do you keep quiet? This is something that we can solve in one day. This is nothing, no, no big issue. With evidence, there is nobody who cannot arrest and put in jail. But the problem was a small problem just goes on and now the whole country and the country is aware is aware of all those things so you you, you are just ruining your reputation for nothing for no no no, no reason mm -hmm. we should easily defeat the, the, the corruption the only support we need from the judiciary is no bail for these accused of for those accused of murder, those please my secretary ch change that those accused of murder, treason, terrorism, rape, refinement, corruption, especially embezzlement, and village thefts. If the if the prosecution is ready for trial. If the prosecution is ready for trial, why bail? Let the case be tried quickly or use alternative justice, but no bail and no impunity for the above cases. Once we deal with the corruption, we then have the other elements of the mass line that I talked about at Colorado recently, different from the elite line. In this speech, I did not elaborate so much 
but at Cororo I spoke a bit about it, although the, the, the microphones were not very clear. I don't know what the people are hearing well. The difference between the NRM and, for instance, the UPC and DP and those groups, Kawaka Yeka, was that the NRM was patriotic for the unit of Uganda, was Pan-Africanist for the, for the unit of Africa, but also on the side of social economic transformation was following a mass line, a mass line. Whatever we do, when the masses to be involved. That's why you hear security for all. Everybody must be secure, not only for a few people. We come to education, to, to immunization, immunization for all. We will never get away. I got smallpox in 1963 when I was 18 years. I had never had a, vac a vaccine of, of smallpox. And I, 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 I defeated the smallpox. You can see how, how, how tough your old man is. When the, when the school, the, the, the health master, Mr. Rema, the chemistry teacher of Ontario, came and put the thermometer in, in, in my mouth. It was 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Is it Fahrenheit or what? Yes, I think that one is Fahrenheit. And apparently by that time, most people are dead. By the time we reach, do we have a doctor here? A medical? Come, come medical. Which medical is that? This is a medical. Your Excellency, I'm Dr. Lukwag Asman. I'm a oh, Lukwag Asman, yes, he's a doctor. Yes, yes. I know him. He's a doctor from very, very far. His village is not on the map. It's very close, sir. <laughs> he's from Murema? Yes, Your Excellency. Near the Tanzanian border. Exactly, but we are near. <laughs> we are closer, because Tanzania is close as well. Very good. Yeah. So, when do people die? At what temperature do people die? Uh, 105 degrees Fahrenheit will kill a patient. Uh -huh. I was at 104. Yeah, that was high. I, I want to imagine that you are even conversing, maybe, or you had what we call delirium, no, where you see unusual images. No, I was actually very peaceful. The Vanyangori Kori, the Vanyangori, you know what? But you should, you should enlist Vanyangori in mm. medical. Okuyongo mm. Vera, when you feel you, you, you are just, you are so weak. Yes. That you, actually you didn't even feel pain. You just feel so weak. When you are in that state, that means that your brain is sliding into like a semi-comatose situation? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, that is what we call delirium. Yes. So the people who are seeing you could have seen some, some reaction or like you... They were going to call it a yam or a... Uh -uh. They were going to call it a, 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 a where a child wants to be like losing focus. But for you, the patient, you don't know. But the outside people would see you losing some focus. Some locus. Focus, focus, focus. So, okay. Yes, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Now, the, you can imagine I was, I was 18. I was 18 and I had never had a vaccine of, 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 of smallpox. The, so, when NRM came, 
we said bona ba gebewe immunization for all bona ba some education for all now this one here the fact this is actually the fault of the of the NRM NRM cadres MPs they are the ones who have not understood the importance of implementing this and, and they are they try to please these local head teachers, I don't know why, who are looking for money, because for them they are looking for money, 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 money. Yeah. And in so doing, they neglect such a very vital program. So therefore, as we fight corruption in this retreat, as we, 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 we analyze our fight against corruption, we should refocus on this mass, mass line issue. Because when we say mass line versus elite, elite line, when we went to school, our study was for the elite, for the few, few people. That's why we are being paid when we are going to university. Even from A level, they will start paying us allowance. We will no longer pay school fees. School fees would, 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 would end, after school fees would, would end at S4. In A level, we would not pay anything. In fact, we would get an allowance to be, to, would be paid. And the boys from uh, Moyo, there was a boy called Kotev, he was from Moyo. He was getting a lot of money that he was coming from very far. He was getting 1,200 shillings. A lot of money that time. We who were from near would get about 500 or something like that. Allowance in A level. In university, we would study free, but also get allowances. It was called boom. So you had a situation where the, the few who went through would get all the education. But I remember there was a, a young girl when we had started UPE who gave a poem and said the other system wanted all education for some, but U, UPE wants some education for all. That was the poem of that young girl who was from one of the Kampala schools. Now you can imagine if these young people could go up to, to, to all level and uh, beat it, the country would totally change. So therefore in this meeting, apart from corruption, you, 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 the NRM people need to impress on these civil servants uh, the issue of the mass line, where you work for the masses, not just for a small group of people, because yeah. that will produce better results. Apart from security for all, we insisted on immunization for all and health care for all. This question of stealing drugs, how long will it go on? Immunization has worked well. That's why many of the diseases are, are, not, are under control. Uh, but why is there no the same success on the side of the uh, therapeutic, therapeutic uh, care? The people of health will have to, to tell us on, on, the, on, the, on, on, the, on the treatment side. Education for all, UPE and USC and BITVET, prosperity for all, that one is beginning to, to move, I think. The other day I got a letter from somebody from Hoima, it's called Irumba, he wrote to me. And he said that after your repeated calls, your repeated messages, we here, in uh, near, I think, in, I think near Hoima, we have started a poultry project 
on three acres. And we are selling more than 1,000 1, trays of eggs per day. And earning, I think he said they are earning 384 million per month. But when they deduct costs, they remain with 50 million in one month, profit. So in a year, those young people, they are earning profit net after deducting all the costs, 600 million shillings on three acres. And he said they were employing 50 people, 50 youth. So when you get these jokers talking about jobs, 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 the jobs are there. If you can create 50 jobs in three acres, that means 18 jobs per acre. If all these people woke up and used the land properly, we would have so many jobs that we would have no people to do them. That's what had happened during the time of the British when they introduced uh, some little coffee and some little cotton. They used to, to, to force people to work. The, the laborers were laborers were not enough. That's how our, our our brothers and sisters from other countries came here, from Rwanda, from Burundi, from Congo. They came because of the Casimoro economy of, of coffee and, and and cotton and sugar and sugar in in in, in Rugazi and and Kachira. They were coming to work. The local, local labor was not enough. That's why those people were coming. So even here, if we do what we're supposed to do, there will be so many jobs that you will not have people to do them. That's what happens when you go to Cheyo, to Japan, to what? It is because they have developed and they have got so much work that the, the local people are not enough. So prosperity for all, this is what we are talking about. Clean water for all, infrastructure development. Now, infrastructure development, in this conference, I want to be assured by the finance and uh, Minister of Works about moving the Fort Porto Road. I don't want to hear that road, the way people are talking about it. Uh, the money must be there so that I, I, we don't have... Here in Kenkwans, we are always eating our dust. We are used to our dust here. And we, we, we can manage. After all, cows don't eat, don't eat tamak, they eat grass. But to have moving the road not, in, not possible, this is really bad planning. I, I hear the same with the Kampara Jinja. The, the Madeira. So I want people to I want people to tell me what is the situation. I'm glad you are working on Masaka Mutukura. But I, those those core corridors must not be interfered with, whatever the situation. And continental and regional economic integration for the market of our wealth products. This business of the, 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 the free trade in Africa is very crucial. Some of the problems, like in Zambia now, they have been having a problem of maize. I spoke with the president there. But I told him, this is caused by the confusion, because Uganda has a lot of maize. It could divide or could divide. When, when you are not able to sell it, when, when there is no market, then the farm, farmers, farmers walk away and start growing the marquang and I don't know what. Then the ne next year, they say, oh, there is a big demand of, of maize in Zambia. So that would not have been the case if there was free trade. Because the one who is able to grow maize easily would, be, would get the whole market of, of, of East and Central Africa, and he would continue and continue, and would, for us, we would do other things. Me, I don't grow maize. I, I have cows. 
Let me concentrate on that. Let somebody concentrate on maize. So when you are negotiating East African ministry, when you are, you are negotiating with these countries, please tell them that they, they are really undermining all, everybody, themselves and, 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 and all of us. They, somebody wanted to stop Tanzanian rice, that I should put a tax on Tanzanian rice. I said, no, I cannot. Why? That there are some inefficient Ugandans who are growing some rice somewhere, but they can't compete. If you can't compete, go to Tanzania, shift. Why should I stop Tanzanian rice? By doing that, I'm actually making uh, many mistakes. Mistake number one, I am cuisine I'm here. I am, I'm stunting the Tanzanian rice grower from expanding. By giving him the market here, if he's cheaper, I am, I am supporting him. I'm encouraging him. Secondly, I am punishing the Ugandans to buy more expensive rice from these inefficient Uganda and so-called farmers, instead of buying cheaper rice from Tanzania. But thirdly, I am also cuisine here, these Ugandans, because once they get used to easy life, they will not improve, become efficient. Now, fourthly, I am, I am provoking Tanzania to, to also block my, 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 my products. So it, it is blindness. Blindness. And yet you have got permanent secretaries who are supposed to be advisors of, of ministries. They are professional. They are there. They are, they, they are permanent. You remember that permanent. Other, other, others are seasonal. But these are permanent. It's not a good, it's not a good idea to have permanent ignorance. So what advice do you give? To, to the ministers on the free trade. So I'm very glad that we, we, we are here. The, with these, we cannot go wrong. I thank everybody, Katwanda Wabeli. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that inspiring speech.